The Great Crypto Scam. So I just got finished watching James Jani's video, The Great Crypto Scam, and it's amassed over 400,000 views. I think 463,000 views in the last two days. And I must say, I think this is a great documentary. I'm going to go through the reasons why I think it's good and some of the points that I don't necessarily agree with and some of the things that we need to talk about regarding this. Now, this is the video I'm talking about. If you guys haven't watched it yet, I highly suggest going out and watching it. It's about 55 minutes long and it goes through basically the trials and tribulations we've been through here in the cryptocurrency market over the last few years. And essentially, he has made up his mind here in this documentary that crypto is a scam, although he does end the documentary with... Let's go over it at the end so you can pause it and not get any spoilers, I guess. Now, this video is going to be a little bit different to the regular news updates that we have. So bear with me. I will be talking a lot directly to you guys through the camera. So if you do have anything that you agree with or disagree with, let me know down there in the comment section. And let's start a discussion about this because I will be reading all of the comments. And I'm really interested to hear what your takes on this documentary are and how you think about my opinions towards it. With that said, let's jump into it. Now, my points. First of all, he starts off the documentary talking about a few different points. First of all, Bitcoin not being the currency that it's set out to be. Now, I've talked about this on the channel before. I don't think Bitcoin will be a currency or will be used as a currency per se. The way we transact day to day, we buy things with Apple Pay now, or we buy things with our card or whatever it is. I don't think Bitcoin's really ever going to be used for that, potentially with the Lightning Network. But then I still kind of have my uh, doubts when it comes to that. What I do think Bitcoin will be used for is not necessarily a sole store of value. So people just store all of their money in Bitcoin. I think that's something, a narrative that's been spread around on the internet a little bit. That's not the kind of idea that I have with this. My thought process around it is far more about being able to transact large amounts of money or move large amounts of money cross-border without a central entity or needing to trust a central entity. Now, one of the utilities that I personally find Bitcoin to have basically no rep placement is the ability for a cross-border transaction with no intermediary with essentially any amount of money, right? You can buy yourself Bitcoin in one country. You can send that Bitcoin cross-border to another country. You can then cash that out using over-the-counter brokers. Or, of course, you can hold it and keep it if that's what you want. I've bought and sold luxury cars with cryptocurrency with that exact method. Whether or not the person was in crypto or not, they could onboard their money into crypto so send me completely painless transactions without the need to hold huge amounts of cash and have it done really quickly. That's what I like about crypto and Bitcoin specifically. The reason why I personally think that Bitcoin is different to all of the other cryptos, it was the first one and one of the most secure. It's not the fastest by any stretch of the imagination, but it's pretty much the only one that doesn't have any centralization. Now, you could argue that it does have centralization with the fact that people hold large amounts of the supply, which is worrying, very similar to what we've seen with banks and stuff like that. But again, I do think it is something that I can personally transact again cross border and hold a certain amount of my wealth in. This is a small amount of your net worth in comparison to other investments like property, stocks and shares, yourself and businesses. This is what we've been discussing on the channel for a long time. And I think that sort of idea is very much missed. So to wrap that currency idea up, I don't think it's going to be used for a currency, but I do think that it could be used a small percent of a portfolio and also an easy way to transact cross-border without an intermediary. That's why I personally like Bitcoin. And so far, I haven't seen anything else that personally strikes my fancy in the way Bitcoin does. Now, I'm open to learn more. I'm open to find something else. But right now, Bitcoin is that option for me. That's why I personally dollar cost average into it. And that's what puts me on to what he was talking about when it comes to Ponzi schemes. Now, the way a Ponzi scheme works, essentially early investors get in and then later investors get in, but the early investors are paid back by the money that the new investors invest into whatever the scheme is. And people can argue, and it is argued in this video, this video right here, that Bitcoin and all crypto is essentially a Ponzi scheme. Now, if you look at it like that, the same argument can be made for essentially any investment. If you take out the fact that maybe the guy who made this documentary or whoever's saying it doesn't believe in crypto, let's take that out and you apply the same logic to something like a share in a company. Yes, 
if you're buying a token that is built on Ethereum and they say there's going to be utility and it's used for yada, 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 that's a different story to what Bitcoin in my eyes is. Bitcoin is not a Ponzi scheme in the same way Tesla shares are not a Ponzi scheme. Tesla is down right now more than Dogecoin, but it doesn't make it a Ponzi scheme, right? Early investors into Tesla made a lot of money and they sold those shares to later investors at a profit. There are definitely Ponzi schemes when it comes to the stocks and shares world and of course the cryptocurrency world, but just because early investors are there to make money doesn't necessarily in my opinion, means it's a Ponzi scheme. Again, it's my opinion. You guys can have completely different opinions. This is simply my opinion. Now, on the idea of a Ponzi scheme, he also talks about it being a get-rich-quick scheme. At the end of the day, this is up for interpretation. I made my money off the back of crypto and Bitcoin. I first bought Bitcoin in early 2017, and I only really started to see some profits. I think it was early 2020. Really, 2021 was where I saw significant gains from what I was buying in the bear market. This can all be validated on this channel right now if you go to my portfolios. It took around four or five years for me to make really any money in crypto. So I don't think that's a get rich quick scheme, and that's not how I take it, but I totally understand that a lot of people do take it that way. But the reason why I always talk about dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin is I don't think it's a get rich quick scheme. I am in crypto to make real world money. We've talked about this on the channel before. I even started making cryptocurrency videos on this channel because I saw so many people talking about hype and meme coins and not realizing that these coins can go up and down. So I specifically started to make videos talking about taking profits because I didn't think there was anyone else really talking about taking profits. Taking profits is of course selling. I sold loads of crypto in the bull market, which was always my plan because of what I learned in 2017 or 2018, where I lost basically all of my investment. Now, to me, that doesn't seem like a get rich quick scheme. But of course, you can get rich really quickly. And this is what was seen in a bull market. But for me, as the example, I was investing in the bear market, the bull market before that, and even the bear market technically before the 2017 2018 bull run. Now, that wasn't a get rich quick scheme. It was a very long time where I was learning many lessons along the way. And that's what I think is much better than jumping into a meme coin and trying to get out before everyone else. You can do that, but that should be kept as a smaller part of your smaller crypto investment with your bigger investment portfolio, right? Hopefully that makes sense. That's how I personally see it. So let me know what you think about that. Overall, I do feel like this guy is relatively against the technology of blockchain. He talks about NFTs and how essentially they are mostly scams. He talks about the bigger artists all propping it all up together. This is something you should definitely watch it and you should find out for yourself. There's a lot of interesting information that I didn't know about before, right? So there's a lot to learn from this, but the underlying tech of blockchain and the underlying tech of NFTs, I still believe in and think there is a space for it. Again, my opinion. And personally, I think there are a lot of use cases for blockchain technology itself. Art is just one of many use cases for NFTs. You can also have things like ownership proof of something like a car that can be transferred straight away on the blockchain. Could be something that I see in the future of NFTs and blockchain. And then also central digital currencies will happen on the blockchain and also a whole host of other things that will utilize the technology of blockchain that isn't being used yet. So I think there is a lot of space for it personally and I'm very excited about where it's going next. And with that said, the way I think about this and essentially calling the whole ecosystem a scam is we have scams and Ponzi schemes happening with cash on the internet in so many different ways. It doesn't mean that the facilities that they use are scams. So that's what I think about that. Scams are rife in the world of crypto. And this is something that we all need to do our own due diligence to protect ourselves against. Like I said at the start of the video, he does end the video saying if the critics are right, dot, dot, dot. I don't think his mind is fully made up as to whether or not the whole crypto blockchain space is 100% a scam. And this is exactly where we were in 2018, 2019, start of 2020. Everybody thought it was a scam. Endless documentaries and news articles about Bitcoin being a scam. Everybody hated crypto 
and then what happened next. So I believe we're going to have another bull cycle. Maybe it's not this year. Maybe it's not next year. Maybe it's not even 2025. Maybe there is a whole new narrative in this world. But I believe we will come back bigger, better and stronger. But I may be wrong. I may lose my money that's invested into crypto. And that is something I'm okay with because I only invest money that I'm completely okay with losing. And then if we do go into another bull market or there is another frenzy around crypto or something similar, you can learn the lessons that we learned over this last bull market. Now, I had the opportunity to learn some of those lessons in the 2017-2018 bull market. And that's why I applied to the 2021 bull market. And that's why I managed to get out with a lot of gains. But that was only because I went through my first bull market and lost a bunch, right? So it takes a lot of learning lessons and we have so much to learn from this. Or we can say goodbye. We can say goodbye like so many people have said goodbye to crypto in 2018. So many people said goodbye to stocks and shares in any amount of crashes in the past. Do we know if we're going to come back? Mm -mm. There's no way to know. But in my opinion, it's something that is worthwhile. A little piece of your time. With that said, hopefully I provided you some value today. And if you are sticking around, consider smashing that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.